Am I live? Testing, testing. All of my sound bars are there. Yes, I am live. And yes, you read that correctly. The FBI is finally investigating the deadbeat Attorney General Ken Paxton. And oh my God, I cannot believe it. What do y'all think of my my muggle my muggle headband here? Went ahead and got out my little Harry Potter uh, wand so I can zap some magic and bless the FBI in their, their quest to, to in, uncover the dastardly deeds of the deadbeat Attorney General Ken Paxton. Ken Paxton is finally going down! <gasps> I can't believe it! Now, the reports are not that he's going down for sure, but let me get my old man glasses out here. Oh, by the way, I wasn't going to do this. I suspected this was coming. And I haven't been live in probably a couple, three weeks. But I'm moving. And I was going to wait till I got moved. But <coughs> this exciting news just came out. <laughs> I can't believe it. Three years I've been doing, I've been harping, harping, harping on somebody. Do something about this asshole. And finally. Of all people, Caleb Leverett, somebody who's really not too gung-ho on cheering on the cops, I will be the first in line to tell the boys and gals at the FBI, if yours truly could be of any help in any weird kind of social media way to help take this douchebag down, please let me know. I'm sure you've got my number anyways. So... I'll just read what I just, to y'all, what I just wrote. Let me get my old man glasses out here. This is from the Texas Tribune, and they are reporting a report from the Associated Press. The Bureau, the FBI is probing allegations that Paxton broke the law by using the Attorney General's office to serve the interests of a political donor, his name is Nate Paul, to un- Two unnamed sources told the Associated Press. I'm not going to read all of this, but i got to get y'all just the gist of what I'm talking about as to why I'm so freaking excited. I'm wearing my dorky headband. I'll, I'll tell you where this came from in, in a minute. Uh, the FBI has investigated Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton, the douchebag Ken Paxton. The Associated Press reported Tuesday evening, today, like literally just an hour ago, I saw it on Facebook, on the Texas Tribune's Facebook uh, vetting allegations made by eight of Paxson's former top aides that he illegally used his power of office to benefit a local political donor. I hadn't said it yet, but his name's Nate Paul. He's a real estate dude in Austin. Two unnamed sources told the Associated Press that the Bureau was examining claims made by the whistleblowers that Paxton broke the law by intervening several times in legal, mat- or here it is, legal matters involving Nate Paul a real estate investor and friend who donated $25,000 to Ken Paxton's campaign in 2018. You know who else was talking about Ken Paxton's uh, campaign in 2018? Yours truly. In fact, I was really talking about it before then, December of 2017, when this douchebag's office sees my bank account only two months after I was awarded primary custody of my then 14-year-old son, Blaine. That happened in July, July 21st to be exact. Uh, Judge Billingsley ordered us to go to mediation. We went to mediation, and we agreed that Caleb Leverett no longer owes back child support. Caleb Leverett no longer owes current child support, because at the time, two of my kids were emancipated, and Blaine was a minor, and London was a minor. She had one. I had one. It was kind of a break-even deal. So we agreed. In writing, signed it. Judge Billings, they put her signature on there and shipped it off to the deadbeat Attorney General Ken Paxton's office, who coincidentally just refused to acknowledge it and update it. And so, as you all have seen, if you're watching this, you've probably seen me talk about that a thousand times. So... Back to the Associated Press via the Texas Tribune. On September 30th and October 1st, eight aides, if you'll remember, October 1st, 
yours truly just happened to be making my very own uh, Paxton for prison march around the Texas Capitol. I uh, went up there to see a bunch of other friends uh, who were putting on a different kind of rally. So I just kind of made my own. Hey, hey, yeah, arrest your boss. Talking to the cops walking around. They were escorting us. I got my own police escort, what I felt like. And I was, everyone was saying, make America great again. I said, that's right. Arrest your boss. And I was holding up my sign, my Paxton for prison sign. I'll get back. To, I've got to go get that. I've got it. I'm moving and I've got that thing set out and I just want to go ahead and show you. I'll be right back. Now, I did not go live on my YouTube channel here, but I did go live on my Facebook. And if you troll my Facebook, look around about October 1st, and you're going to see yours truly walking around with this sign, holding it up, and nobody there, not one single person, they knew who Ken Paxton was, most of them anyways, but they'd never heard that he was arrested in 2015. They had no idea that he had a mugshot made in 2015. These are all MAGA people, like hardcore Republicans, all of them. I'm not getting into the politics of that not a MAGA person myself, but they were MAGA people, like hardcore Republicans. They kind of sort of heard of him, but nobody had a clue that the guy had already been arrested in 2015, five, almost six years ago. And so I made it a point to point out the glaring obvious, and I was walking around, went and bought this, spent about $15. This used to be a squeegee, and I popped the head off, and then I was didn't wear a mask, and I, wanted, I bought some of this cord or this cardboard stuff. And got these nice little zip ties and put on there, and just did what I do best: raising hell, because I don't do much very well, anyways. But I can raise hell. I know how to do that. Made this nice little sign. It's on both sides. So, no. Anyway, I kept talking about he's been to prison. They hadn't heard it. They're like, hmm. I got a few of them to kind of agree with me. Okay, okay. That night, I got back and it broke that what this part of the story is talking about on September 30th, October 1st, eight aides in total authority, uh, see, authorities that they believe said they believe that Paxton had committed crimes as part of his relationship with Paul, citing bribery and abuse of office. So follow me here. The guy was literally out on bail for five years, and now he's getting busted doing more dastardly deeds. Um, since then, four aides have been fired, three have resigned, and one has been placed on leave, sparking a whistleblower lawsuit. Paxton, a Republican, in his second term has denied wrongdoing and said that he will not resign his post. That arrogant son of a bitch. That's a cool thing about me is I'm not a newscaster and I don't have to pretend like I don't have a bias because I most certainly do. Even some in his own party calling him to do so and take the state's top leader call the allegations, quote unquote, concerning. Earlier Tuesday, oh, that just reminds me. I've, tell you, I've told you all that I've got these little birds that, that chirp in my ear. Well, some of my little birds that were telling me that they were rubbing shoulders with some of the higher ups, the really higher ups in the Texas Republican Party here recently. And even they are saying, wow, man, it's hard to talk shit about my own party, but ugh, it does. Oh, it, it doesn't look good. And they are distancing himself. There's one representative, and I don't know the guy, his name is Chip Roy, I believe. He's a Republican, and he's one of the very first ones. I'll, I'll give him this. I don't know much about him other than this. He had the balls, the testicular fortitude to jump in and shit on his own party as far as Ken Paxton's concerned and called for the guy to resign a month ago. He's in some big race, which I don't get into because I don't care. I don't uh, I'm just giving the facts as I know them. Good for you, Mr. Chip Roy. 
having a set, having a set of balls and standing on principle. Whether or not I agree with your principles is irrelevant. The fact is that you believed in something and you stood up. And I'm, if I'm not mistaken, Chip Roy was one of the very first people or that Paxton hired in his own cabinet like years ago. Don't quote me on that. There's he knows him. Let's just put it through that way. Um, early Tuesday before the FBI investigation was made public, Paxton said in a statement that he knows, quote, a little something about being falsely accused, more arrogant prickhood there, and dismissed the allegations by made by the whistleblowers as overblown based upon assumptions and to a large degree misrepresent the facts. He's always dismissed them. Everybody else is wrong but Ken Paxton in Ken Paxton's eyes. What what kind of uh, that 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 that's what, what that's kind of the definition or uh, characteristic of what do they call those people? Narcissists. They're always wrong or right, and everybody else is wrong. The people that sued him last time in 2015, they're all wrong. The, his own top brass that he hired and even gave awards to and promotions. One chick in particular, I don't remember her name, started off her salary six, seven years ago, like 50 grand, worked her way up in a mere less than a decade up to over 200,000. He personally gave her award, an award and signed a copy of some book. What was it? Some economic book. I can't remember. So that made the front page too. And he fired her and called her a disgruntled employee. Paxton has been under indictment for more than five years on securities fraud. Where have we heard that before? Caleb just keeps bringing that up like three years now. Uh, fraud, fraud, but has yet to stand trial. He has dismissed the charges as politically motivated and entered a not guilty plea. Neither a campaign spokesperson for Paxton nor a defense attorney is working on his long-running securities fraud case returned a request for comment about the FBI probe Tuesday, today. A spokesperson for the FBI declined to comment. That's actually not surprising because the FBI just, they don't give a shit about press. They just do what they do and they can do it. And again, I'm not normally a guy that would, uh, you know, be rooting for the cops, but I, I just right here, sober as sober can be, Caleb Leverett, I am rooting for Team FBI on this one, like all the way. Uh, since the allegations first or surfaced last month, four examples have emerged Paxton using his 4,000 employee agency to benefit Paul. The whistleblowers allege Paxton tried to help Paul on a pair of open records disputes, urging Texas employees to release documents that could or that should have been confidential and that Paxton rushed to legal opinion for foreclosure sales during the coronavirus pandemic, which helped Paul avoid such sales on several of his properties. This Nate Paul guy, he's real young. He's only like 32, 34 years old. He's a young guy. Like multi multi millionaire, like the dude literally owns, I think the 3M, the former 3M, like the manufacturer, the gigantic billion dollar company, one of their old warehouse manufacturing places. The Attorney General's office at Paxton's direction, the whistleblowers say, took also took the highly unusual step of intervening in a lawsuit between Paul and an Austin area charity. I don't remember that charity's name, but they don't mention it here, but they have in past uh, news reports. And, and in September, Paxton hired an outside attorney. I've, there's so much. I've, I'm trying to fill in so much, but I'm trying not to just put everybody to sleep. Uh, he, he, he hired this young dude with not a lot of experience. Hang on. Uh, let me see if they bring it up. I don't remember. Who had been complained by Paul that he had been mistreating, mistreated during an FBI raid on his property in 2019, last year. Paxton staff, the whistleblowers say, had already vetted and all the allegations and found them meritless. But Paxton continued to push the investigation. Okay, one of the big conflicts is 
is uh, the the prosecutors in 2015. They they had to get a special prosecutor because of who Paxton is in the office he holds. They were charging I don't remember like $500 an hour or $300 an hour, like typical really high end lawyer stuff. And Paxton was complaining or his team was complaining that they're charging too much and basically they're just stonewalling it. Well, he goes out and hires this new dude out of, out of Houston and was paying him off the taxpayer's dole the exact same amount to come in and investigate the FBI, which was investigating his buddy, uh, Nate Paul. So, well, that's just, there's a, that that's into this story, but. Anyways, I am on top of the world, and I told you where I, I tell you where I where I where I got this. I wasn't going to bring this up until it happened, and it's happening this week. But I am moving. Yours truly finally pulled. As much as I could together, sold everything I could possibly sell. Just had a yard sale, um, sell my old car. They're going to bring the money by tomorrow, so my old king size bed. I bought a boat. It's an old boat, and it's a little boat, but it's a liveaboard boat. And I'm really excited. And it's not even the state of Texas. I wasn't going to say that, but I had to. So, okay, anyways, um, where was I? Oh, yeah. My insurance agent is a personal friend of mine. We're not real, real close, but he's definitely a friend. Uh, he knows that I am a muggle and that I love. Oh, hang on, hang on just one second. That's Blaine. I have to talk to him. No problem. Or tomorrow. All right, cool. Anyways, his name is Brad Albright, and he's a friend of mine, and he uh, knew that I was a uh, Harry Potter fan. And he sent this to me along with Gryffindor. He asked me what house thought I was and I told him contrary to what Charday would would say I said I am a Gryffindor and it's a, a little another headband I gotta take this off because it's really it's like a sweatband but I kind of look like oh uh Johnny Johnny from uh Cobra Kai or you know what I'm talking about Johnny from the Karate Kid if y'all haven't seen Cobra Kai it's really really good it's on Netflix let's see he sent me oh where'd he go Here it is, in case you are wondering. I was just told the other day that my insurance people, they do uh, boat insurance as well. And they came out with these handy-dandy little socks, these diapers to go over your face because apparently there's some kind of super, super deadly disease that's allegedly killing everybody, but it's not really killing everybody. But either way, try to get on the airlines, and without something like this, you can't do it. But now, yours truly... I have a face diaper, and now anywhere I go, I can walk around completely guilt-free of not being responsible for killing anybody because I've got a face diaper on. So anyway, that was just a free plug for my buddy over at, they used to be called Brian Duncan. Now, apparently, they've changed it to All Bright and Duncan. So if you want to, oh, just to tell you what the quality of this guy and again, he has no idea I'm saying this. He's certainly not paying me to say it. Uh, Brad Albright, when I got sued for the umpteenth time in 2017, where I ultimately got primary custody of Blaine, this man took off of work, and he never got on the stand, but he was fully prepared to get on the stand for me as a character witness. And I will forever, 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 ever be as grateful to that man as I am for Judge Sarah Kate Billingsley for not giving me what I wanted because I didn't get everything I wanted. She prides herself kind of not nobody gets everything they want. But in a way, I kind of did because all I ultimately really wanted 
was my kids to have a choice. So I'm grateful to Sarah Kate Billingsley, Judge Sarah Kate Billingsley for that, and to Mr. Brad Albright, my friend at the, my entrance. He's just, I'm not going to go in. He'd probably roll over in his great, well, he's not dead, but he'd just die if he heard me talking about this. But there's other things he's done for me in the past that he's just one of those silent helpers that he just never says anything. And I just later find out what he, the things he does. And it, it's, it's encouraging to me to know that there are still some good quality, nice, reputable, principled people out there. So anyways, how y'all doing? I'm going to have to get my old man glasses. Sometimes I can see without them. And sometimes I can't. And um, I'll say something else. Oh, yeah. My, I already talked about it, my boat, but I'll talk about the boat later. And, well, I, I just can't talk about it. It's going to be fun. My channel, let's just say my channel is going to change course and it's just going to go wherever the wind blows it because the world is about to literally be my oyster. So, Sade, if you're ever listening to this, we've been talking about this for over two years, sort of, kind of, off and on. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm going to get my passport. Somehow, some way, I'm going to get to England. So, anyways, how are y'all doing? I have no idea what's been going on in the comment section. Um, not talking about Parker, not talking about the kids, whichever one of my glorious, uh, glorious swamping willows in there. Thank you so much. I'm not trying to be a dick about not talking about my kids and how are the kids? I'm really, really not. But the shorter answer, the short answer is not going to satisfy anybody. A thousand times it'll get asked. How is Parker? How are the kids? And a thousand times I'm going to say they're great. They've got their things that they're doing. They've got their problems. They've got their successes. And they've reached that point where they're great. And I'm not going into it anymore. I've gone into it as far as I'm going to go. It's in a video that I made called How's Parker? How's the Kids? Because those are the two big questions I get asked over and over and over and over. And even if I was going to talk about my kids' private lives and how they're doing now, Nobody's going to sit here and want to listen to me repeat myself every single time that keeps getting asked in the comment section. So, again, I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm not. But it's got to stop because it, it just it, it just it, it's just never ending. So whichever one of my whomping willows is out there smashing that same silly question that I've already got tagged up there in a little little little. What do you call it? A pin. I pinned it. You want to know about how my kids are doing? I've already talked about it. You can go watch that. Favorite food place, Mexican food place, particularly a little holes in the wall, not the big conglomerates. And if I did go to Odessa, which I hope I never do, I do miss uh, Taco Villa and Rosa's. Oh, those are about as big of conglomerate Mexican places as I go. And oh, it's Wicca. Thank you so much. Becca's there too? Yes. Becca, I hadn't seen you in a while. Jiminy Christmas. Of course, I hadn't been on a while, but what's a snowman's favorite food? No idea. Well, that's really nice that your kids are good. Thank you. Yes, that's perfect. That's HBO hilarious. Trump had a case of COVID-19. Biden had a case of she wasn't 19. <laughs> <laughs> Pedophile jokes are always okay. We can always joke. And just so you know, I'll tell equal jokes about the left as I tell jokes about the right. And pedophile jokes are funny because they're just jokes. Nobody here is promoting pedophilia. That's how we squash the bastards is we make fun of them and turn them into uh, Epstein 2.0. Because everybody know that Jeffrey Epstein did not kill himself. Uh, I love your channel, man, from Bry. Well, thank you very much. Topless Ama, Frosty Flakes, 
Andrew Elliott, what is your favorite car, Caleb? Oh, the one I'm about to sell tomorrow because I'm going to get a little bit of cash. It's an old, it's an 06 G35 Infinity. It's got 180,000 miles. Apparently, once they start leaking oil, they're not worth very much. Runs great. Just can't run it really hard because it's a V6 rear wheel drive. So I don't know if that's my favorite car. My favorite car I've ever owned was the Dodge Ram SRT10. I've had two of those and they're black. I loved it. It was a really fast, got the Viper V10. Loved it. Uh, ecstatic. Hi, just watched your videos. Thank you. Are you brand new? They're so fun to watch. Ugh, some of them are fun. Uh, the old ones are kind of hard to watch. I can't even watch some of my own, particularly Parker vs. the Man. Oh, Becca, thank you so much. So those of you all that don't know, my little Harry Potter wand here, Miss Becca is the one that mailed it to me. She knew I was brand new into Harry Potter about two, two and a half years ago. And I guess I was 40 when I got into it. I was kind of a late bloomer like I am with pretty much everything in my life. And she mailed these. It's one of those deals where all the boxes are the same. You can get Harry's wand, you can get Hermione's or Ron's or uh, Dumbledore's or I don't know. There's like eight or ten different characters, but they're all labeled the same. You never know which one you're going to get. And her and her kids and family opened up every all their boxes and they got every wand except for Harry's. And I got Harry's wand. And I'm kind of a dork because I love posting about it, kind of bragging about it. So, Becca, thank you so much. So, na 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 na. Ha! She got Voldemort. Let's see. What's your favorite NFL team from Bryce Drexler? I am not an NFL person. Back in the day when I was a child, I loved the Dallas Cowboys. I loved uh, Tom Landry and Randy White, who was number 54, was my favorite player at the time. But I've got personal reasons as to why I no longer – it has nothing to do with anything in the last five, six years as far as every, what everybody else doesn't like the NFL – I've been boycotting the NFL for, and it's not, not their fault. It's personal reasons why I do not like pretty much any organized sports. But so I have never kept up with. But who knows? With this new chapter in my life, I might just start watching sports again. Who knows? Uh, Shasta Loft, Randy White was badass. Hell yeah, he was. I even got his number on my jersey for the Dowling Packers in the fifth or sixth grade, number 54. Becca Blackwell, yeah, you suck, Caleb. LOL, I do. But I'm going to take care of Becca, I promise. I'm going to take care of your Harry Potter one, I promise. It's all mine. It's going to go on my boat. Um, Andrew Elliott, Becca Blackwell, that is not nice. Oh, she's just kidding. She's kind of like my sister. We like to, like, jab each other. Cookies asks, what's your favorite snack? Ooh. The favorite snack that I shouldn't eat or the favorite snack that I like to eat? The favorite snack that I like to eat that shouldn't, I mean, that I shouldn't eat is gummy bears. I love five-pound sacks of gummy bears more than you do, I promise. Uh, favorite snack that I like that I can eat or, um, I don't really, that sounds cliche, just bananas, apples. Uh, David Perry, my favorite baseball team is the Mavs. Oh, basketball. I was about to say, I don't know a lot of professional sport, but I'm pretty sure the Mavs are basketball, but I misread that. This username violates our blah, blah, blah. Okay, you're talking to somebody else. Little bit 603, so what I miss? You missed me talking about the fact that the FBI is up Ken Paxton's sorry ass as we speak and laugh about it. Another reason I would have, wasn't going to bring it up, I suspected this was coming, only because I watched this really, really, really close. Anything in the news about it, I'm all over it like stink on shit. I also happen to have my little birds that know the higher-ups and the personal friends of some of these people, and they kind of whisper in my ear. So I had a, a, new, I had a hunch that this was coming. I just didn't know when or how it was going to play out. So the reason I didn't want to talk about it until I got there is if or when Ken Paxton uh, actually gets arrested, A, I hope it's in the most humiliating way possible because, you know, as far as politics goes, he's been given an option. He's been given an out. Basically, 
yo, dude, you've totally screwed the pooch on this one. If you'll just come quietly, we'll work with you because you are higher up, blah, blah, blah. You know, they always get treated preferentially. You know, they'll take plea deals and, you know, do wind up slap on the wrist community service. But he's just flat out said, no, no, not resigning, not resigning. They're rogue employees. No, they're all, everybody's wrong but me. I'm Ken Paxton. And so they're making it really hard on the people that are gen- normally like basically on his side, fellow law enforcement. And so it looks to me like they're going to put, they're going to put the screws to this guy, like really bad, like nasty. And so what I was hoping to do, and I'm still going to do it. I just, I've learned not to make too many plans because like Ron and Hermione and uh, Harry, uh, like Harry said, you know, she, she, she said, we've got, he said, we've got to go to, after they fell off the dragon in the water, we got to go to, we got to go to, 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 uh, I just, I just had a brain for I had to go to the school Hogwarts. We got to get to Hogwarts. And she said, no, Harry, we've got a plan. We got a plan. And he said, Hermione, Anytime we ever make plans, we get there, all hell breaks loose. So I've learned not to plan. I just kind of go with it. But what I'm wanting to do is once Ken Paxton is put in handcuffs, and again, hopefully it's like in a really, really embarrassing scene, like in front of, like maybe he's giving a speech or giving a powwow somewhere with his buddies, or maybe he's doing a radio interview and he gets take or a TV interview and they take him live and arrest his ass. And once he gets actually thrown in the pokey, I'm going to, or I have plans to, what I'd like to do is once he's convicted, if he's convicted, assuming he's going to be convicted and shipped off to prison, wherever he's going, I would like to uh, find out which prison it is and who his cellmates are going to be. And I would like to get their names and bless them with some commissary money. And if you would like to, don't, not going to do it now, but that at that point, if you would like to give in, chip in a few bucks to uh, send to the, the fellow inmates of the deadbeat attorney general, Ken Paxton. So uh, his, uh, his cellmates can have a, have a little fun and they can get the extra snacks and just, you know, do what it is. They pat old Kenny boy on the back and just do what prison inmates do best. You know, not every prison inmate that's in prison actually deserves to be there. I was never in prison, but I was in jail, and I don't think I deserve to be there. The in- fellow inmates I was in with said that they believed that I didn't deserve to be there. The jailers who watched my videos while I was in jail came back and reported and said, Mr. Leverett, you don't deserve to be here. So not everybody who's in prison is necessarily a bad person. You know, who knows? Maybe they just got caught with an eight ball or something. You know, normally not really a bad person. They just happen to get caught up in the war on drugs. So they're not necessarily bad people. They have families. And some of these people deserve a little bit of respect. I would like to see the end of the war on drugs. But if they're in there and they aren't, you know, a truly bad person, you know, bless their hearts, the wrong place, the wrong time, whatever, I'd like to help them out and send a, just boost up their morale and give them a little bit of commissary. They can order a little bit of extra food or a little bit. Of, I, in, in prisons, they're a lot more lax than they are county jails. I, I think you can have certain electronics here and there. It just kind of depends on where they're going. But I want to pad the pockets, pun intended, <laughs> of the fellow inmates at wherever Ken Paxton hopefully spends the rest of his sorry ass life in jail. And I assume Angela Paxton, the, 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 his wife, that he was, according to testimony in an affidavit that was given, uh, he cheated on his wife. Yeah, yeah. Senator Angela Paxton won his seat in 2018. And now it's come to light from two different sources, according to the news people, that Ken Paxton was banging this chick. and. This chick wound up getting hired by Nate Paul. Hmm. wonder how that went. It has got to really suck to be in Ken Paxson's household right now. It's got to be like, like walking on eggshells. Like, what do we do? What do we do? We're on top of the world. We're on top of the world. And like uh, the house of cards, uh, 
uh, the TV show, if you ever watched it, it just comes crumbling down. <laughs> it's just so glorious to watch. And I know I'm being entirely, entirely too obnoxious about this, but I can't help it. I cannot help it. His own campaign manager knew what was going on. She's the one that reached out to me, uh, Michelle Smith, back in the day. Y'all have heard me blab about it a thousand times. They knew what was going on with me. They knew I was suffering. They knew that I won in court. They knew that they were supposed to update it, and they just didn't do it. And if you've ever, I don't know if you've ever had your bank account stolen, but when you write out, I don't write checks anymore, but back in the day, you write out a bunch of checks, I don't know, for rent, utilities, food, and it just goes to bounce because unbeknownst to you, the money you thought was in there was no longer in there. It's a wonder I didn't get sued again by the banks or somebody somewhere uh, just because of checks that didn't clear. It's been so long now. Somehow I got out of it or I, I've worked around it, but I've never, ever, ever fully recovered since. And all my haters are going to say, okay, Lever, you're always out there blaming somebody else for your problems. No. I fully own my own problems. I fucked up a long time ago and made a bunch of babies with somebody I was not compatible with. That was my fault. I own that. I since have changed my ways and how I educate myself and particularly educate my kids because I can't unring my own bell. But I can, the only thing I can do is I can talk to my own children and try my best to steer them in a way that will keep them out of the gigantic bear trap that is known as the crooked family courts, particularly in Texas. Well, they're everywhere, but I just obviously happen to live in Texas. So that's the best that I can do for my own kids is to do that. But yes, I do uh, take responsibility for myself. Speaking of taking responsibility, yours truly Hey, Caleb, your shirt is clean. Well, duh, I just got it. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, I just got it out of the out of the washer. Uh, damn it, Becca, you made me lose my train of thought. Thank you for noticing my clean shirt, though. Hey, I'm trimming up. Why do you like this? That's where I was going. Uh, this Friday, in about, let's say, three more days, it'll be three months since yours truly is completely 100% sober. No booze whatsoever. None, not one. And it's not, again, I've talked about this, but so far, for me anyways, so far, it's not been a struggle. Once I got over the DTs, I don't like, it's not like I'm like, do I, do, do, I, do, I pull, do I twist this cap off or not? I want to drink, but I, no, it's, I'm the just the smell, the thought of the smell. I haven't smelled alcohol, but just the thought of the smell of alcohol makes me gag, makes me sick to my stomach. So as far as my haters, that's where I was going. Uh, as far as my haters go who tell me that I need to accept responsibility for my own actions. Well, I am accepting responsibilities for my own actions. I acknowledge that I had a problem with drinking. It started out... Becca, thank you very much. You don't have to do that, but thank you. It started out drinking uh, professionally uh, in that nasty August day back in 2014 when my own son was ripped away from me. I uh, went home and just got completely shit-faced, and I got really, really depressed, and I kept on and on and on drinking, just thinking it was going to get rid of that depression. Well, all it did was just make things worse. Then the depression left, and I got used to sleeping with it. I had to have it to go to sleep. So now I weaned myself off of that, took responsibility for myself. And as of this coming weekend, it'll be three months. So here's to uh, sober November, then sober December, and sober 22, and sober 20, 30, 40, until the day I die. Wicker Rose, congrats. Well, thank you very much, Wicker. How you been? Uh, Camila Rajendran, love that you're telling us this with a wand in your hand. Uh, Dakota, play hello. Uh, Shaston Loft, oh, lol, Andrew. Stephen Welch says, Congrats, thank you very much. Tay Russ, look up to 
you so much. Oh, well, thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Juan Roman, can you tell me what is going on? Just clicked on this video out of nowhere. Well, Juan Roman, I'm talking about the deadbeat attorney, General Ken Paxton, who I've been harping on for three years. Hashtag pas Paxton for prison. Click on it. You can click on that link. Hashtag Paxton for prison. Been harping on it for three years. He's the deadbeat attorney general, Ken Paxton. He stole my bank account and on and on and on. And now he's uh, getting his, his Cheerios are getting pee peed in by the FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation is coming down on the deadbeat attorney general saying, Mr. Paxton, now, 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 you can't be crooked. You can only do so much being a crooked elitist, but now you've crossed the line. So that's what I'm talking about. Hold the one right. Well, how about this? It's mine. Harry Potter said that, right? Clicked it. I don't think I could break this if I wanted to because mine's not wooden like Harry's. There, there, I'm holding it right. Ace Anai Ajani, I probably butchered it, I'm so sorry. Hi from New Zealand, love your story. Thank you, Ace. Uh, Camila Rendren, karma's gonna get Paxton one day. It's coming, it's coming real fast. Shasta Law, Paxton is ready for a long night in prison. Try a long lifetime. Becca Blackwell, no. What? No breaking the wand. Oh, I'm not gonna break it. Are you kidding me? It's like this is literally on my on my drive to my boat. It's like gonna be in my side pocket right here. I'm gonna like zapping people, I'm trying to work on my my road rage instead of cussing them out and tell them where to go and where to stick it. I just want to go. What, what what's a give me a Harry Potter spell? My mind just went blank. You know, Accio train wreck. <laughs> Pull the train over to crash into him or something. Paxton for prison ASAP. David Perry. Yes, Dakota plays three. How are you doing in COVID-19? I'm doing my best to pretend that it's just like every other year because it is. What's up with Paxton? Says Robert Easley. He's going to prison. FBI is on his ass. Uh, abracadabra. Abracadabra. <laughs> in effigy only. That's all I was doing. Just in effigy. That's legal to do that. Lumos. Yes, Wicca. Lumos. What's the one? What's the one where they're? <laughs> what's the one where Professor Flitwick is teaching how to make things float? You're doing it wrong. It's uh. Oh, hey, when I get put on the spot and I can't remember a Harry Potter line, help me out here. I'm not moving on until I remember that. What's the spell that Hermione gets on to Ron for when he can't make? His feather float, and she does it. Professor Flitwick. Oh, congrats. Uh, Leviosa. Yeah. Wingardium of Leviosa. You're doing it wrong. It's when Levioso, not Leviosa. <laughs> and there is a YouTube, uh, a cart. I might have talked about this, but look it up. If you get bored, look on YouTube and look up Leviosa. I think it's all you got to put in. It'll it'll pop up, but it's a cartoon. It's got Hermione and Ron and uh, Professor Snape in it, and it's only like a thirty seconds or a minute. <laughs> and Blaine, <laughs> Blaine was the one that actually <laughs> pulled it up for me. <laughs> I don't know how many millions and millions of views it's got. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. <laughs> yeah, let me go. Saw Jack at the beach. Oh, oops. Tay Russ, it just makes me so happy to see you smiling. Well, thank you very much, Tay Russ. It makes me happy to. It makes me so happy to be smiling. It's 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 nice. Uh, Master of Trig, we can guardian Leviosa. Yeah, that's it. Gotta love Harry Potter. HBO hilarious. That's right. I will always be a forever gigantic fan of Harry Potter. Omar Zawila, you are looking like one of the characters from the Home Alone movie. Oh, I've not been told that. Hopefully not one of the bad guys. You're about to get zapped, numb nuts. Anyways, kids, it's 44 into it, and I guess I'll probably go unless y'all just want to talk about something. What's your Hogwarts horse, uh, Hogwarts house? Uh, 
Uh, if you ask Chardet, it's not Gryffindor, but if you ask me, it is Gryffindor. And this is a headband. Now that I got the other goofy one off, this will be for the people that are just joining us that didn't, didn't start whenever I started out. I'm getting my boat, and this is, I assume, maybe probably hard to get hats on boats unless I do it myself. So maybe I'll just grow all my hair out. I'm going to need like a headband to hold it all back. And this will be nice to keep the sweat and the, the seawater out of my eyes. So Let's talk, man. Wicker Rose Hogwarts Gryffindor. Yes. Mr. Sultan, Mr. Caleb, you look like the Saudi Arabian Minister of Foreign Affairs, I swear. Do I really like in real life? Adele Al Jabbar? Oh, I've certainly never been told that. I'll have to look up who Adele, I know who Adele is, the singer, but I don't know who Adele Al Jabbar is. Uh, Kimala, you really look like Hopper from Stranger Things. <laughs> I love Hopper. Again, from somebody who's been really, really hard on police, I love Jim Hopper. Is it Jim Hopper? I think so. I think it's Jim Hopper. Cannot wait for season. What do they come? What's next? Season four? Cannot wait. Shaston Lot, leave the old guy alone. Yes, that's right. Boy, Caleb, or boy is the name. Okay, Caleb, do you eat? Did you eat my beans? I think I eat anybody's but beans but my own. I don't know what that means. Andrew Elliott, anyone want to do a Zoom meeting, including you, Caleb? I may, may venture that way. Probably not tonight, just because I'm almost at an hour. I hope that Omar Zawila over the Paxton gets arrested for being a complete idiot. He's going to get arrested for a lot more than that. HBO Hilarious. Have you seen John Wick? Oh, yeah. I was late to the game at seeing John Wick. I only saw the first one probably not even a year ago. I've seen one and two. I don't think I've seen three. I've seen Matrix three, but uh, I haven't seen uh, John Wick three. Caleb Abbey says, hello, Alex Schmidt. Uh, what's up from Minnesota? Caleb Abbey. Hi, Caleb. My name is Caleb. We spell it just slightly different, but Hello. Uh, Shaston late. I was late too. No biggie. I know people come on different times. Uh, if you do want to catch the part, the main topic of the title of this, uh, about five to ten minutes after I'm done here, it'll be available to you for you to watch. If you care to watch me mocking the deadbeat Attorney General Ken Paxton, you can watch it from the beginning. Uh, Logan Sires. Hey, Caleb. I was late. That's okay. Mr. Sultan, you look like him, but he is thinner. Oh, you calling me a fat ass. Hey, I've lost like seven pounds since I quit drinking. I've still got, I got some of this, some of this I got to get rid of, but I've lost, I've lost like fat, but I walk like a minimum of two miles a day. And I'm, I've got like veins in my legs now, like muscle veins. It's pretty cool to me. Where'd it go? There it is. Uh, Mr. Sultan, no. Master, oh, Mr. Trig, LOL. Uh, Stranger Things 4 is going to be great. Am I living forever? Not sure what that means. Uh, loom it up. Mr. Sultan, KC. I have, haven't drank since my birthday in September. Nice, Alex Schmidt. Keep it up. This society we live in promotes alcoholism and alcohol constantly, whether it's in songs that you and I love, movies that you and I love, uh, art. I mean, everything. It's just so – I'm not for, I'm not a guy that would, like, calls for things being illegal, like I want to end the war on drugs. But if something was had to be illegal, if it was one or the other – I'd much rather it be alcohol be illegal than pot. I don't even like pot, but pot is not destructive. And I know there's some people in that just drives them bonkers when I say that. They've had some personal issues with people on pot. I totally get it. Potheads, they keep to themselves. It causes problems. Sometimes the problem's you, though. They, they, they clam up. 
because they know you don't disapprove, but they're going to do who be who they want to be anyways, whether you like it or not. So maybe if you're not getting along with someone you're close to as a pothead, maybe you should be a little more accepting of that person. Omar Zawila, I never drank alcohol in my life. Good. Alcohol is poison. Wicker Rose. It is. It literally is poison. That's not an exaggeration. Alcohol is a poison. You know, I mean, I don't know. I don't fuss at people that, you know, occasionally have a drink here, a beer. There. It's no big deal. But it almost all, it's so addicting. It just, it leads to where I was using it to cover depression, using it as a sleep aid. And it's so terrible for your body. Uh, Linda Malay or Millet, Millet Malay, I'm not sure. Hi, I hope you're doing okay. You feel bad what you're going through. The answer is Jew. J-E-U-E. -E. Not sure what that means. Pot fucking stinks. Amen, Miss Becca. I just, I, I like the buzz. I like the way it makes me feel usually, but I can't stand the smell. I can't stand the taste. Not shitting on my pothead friends who love it. I'm not. That's your thing. How about it? You'll never hear me complain. Just not going to do it in my house or in my car. And I'm certainly not going to be, get really close to you because it just stinks. I'm sorry. There's a reason they call it skunkweed or skunk or whatever. Liga Rose and Becca, the strong strains are the ones that stink. I wish it smelled better, too. Liga uh, Rose, alcohol is poison. LOL, that is too funny. Robert Easley, what I think about the election. I, I sure have at it. I don't talk too much about politics unless it's pedophile jokes involving presidential candidates. Those are funny. That's the only thing I don't like about pot is the stink so bad. Yeah, me too. It, but it most definitely should not be legal. I saw the funniest meme. Y'all know the old man. The, I don't know how you even describing the. He's just got this the funniest smile. He's always holding a coffee cut and he's looking at his computer and he's looking at the. You know what I'm talking about? The old man. The, he's just famous for being. He's not really famous as an actor or anything. He's just famous for being a meme and the top one is he's reading his computer holding his mug and said a vaccine will be available by, or approved by the fda in less than one year and in the bottom it said he's holding it with his shit eating grin marijuana is a plant that's been around for thousands of years but for some reason the fda still needs more time to do research on it <laughs> i thought it was hilarious I smoke weed and call it medicine. David Perry. Nice. Uh, it is. It is medicinal. I use it as medicine. I literally, I've talked about this publicly, openly. I used marijuana for about one week. I made some brownies with it. I smoked some of it. I didn't like the smell when I smoked it. Didn't like the taste of it when I ate it. But it helped me get over the DTs where I could actually go to sleep. And it is medicinal. And then once I got past that, did no longer needed alcohol. And no longer care to do weed because I'm as corny cliche as it sound. I'm literally high on life. I enjoy at this age, 43. I enjoy when I get tired, I just lay down and close my eyes five, 10 minutes. I'm out like a baby. Alex Schmidt, yeah, I saw the video on him on those I became a meme videos. Yeah, the old, you don't know what I'm talking about then. Logan Sayers, I use cannabis to help me sleep. Nothing wrong with that, man. You know, try your best, I would suggest. You know, just learn to go to sleep on your own because sometimes you don't have it. But, yeah, it, it, marijuana is so beneficial in so many ways, with it, whether it's stress, depression, a sleep aid, a uh, lot. There's so many benefits. Of course, it's probably not the best thing to put any kind of, you know, burnt material smoke, but it's a hell of a lot less nasty and less bad for you in a stinking cigarette, I'll tell you that much. LOL, the Sando, Gabby Delgado, Omar Zawilla, I've smoked once because one of my relatives dared me to smoke it because he said that it was good to smoke. Well, it depends on who you ask. If you ask Cheech and Chong, you know, they, they worship it. Shastaloff, I like the way weed sounds when it burns. Okay. Camila, here in Singapore, if you get caught with more weed 
than a 20 cent coin weighs, you most likely get the death sentence. Jesus Christ. You know, I had some like super religious freaks over there in Singapore. Why? It grows from the ground. According to the Bible, anyways, that's one of God's own plants. Genesis 129 says that not only does it say that God created it, but God said it was good. So the politicians who make it illegal in any country, anywhere, the cops who enforce those nasty, disgusting, draconian laws that put people in prison for simply holding one of God's plants are literally, literally going against, if they are religious, particularly Christian, literally going against their own belief in their own Bible that they claim to worship. I bought a hookah, hookah on Amazon earlier this spring and haven't even smoked from it. Okay. I've never smoked from I know what you're talking about, but I've never smoked one from one of them. Oh yeah, it's Bible time. Eh, not really. I know I've got a lot of Christian people on here and they, some of them are cool with it. Some people get a little upset when I make jokes, but you know, my my my, my intention is never to intentionally like attack any particular religion at all. If I'm going to make fun of religion it's going to be like i don't know all of them it's not anyone in particular but at the same time if you are religious that's, that's okay go be religious that's great if that that helps you um i think that's totally cool like when people tell me they pray for me even though i'm not religious anymore they tell me they pray for me and i think it's sweet i think it's very very kind uh kind of like you know meditation uh, i appreciate it David Perry, nobody should be punished by death, not even pedophiles and spree killers. That's definitely up for debate. Um, I'm not going to lose any sleep if someone puts a pedophile in his place. That's just me, though. Shannon Wright says, hello, Caleb. Well, hello, Shannon Wright. Mr. Sultan, hookah sucks. We have a lot on Saudi Arabia, in Saudi Arabia, it tastes so fruity. Mm. In Saudi? Really? I thought, see, Mr. Sultan, I assume you're in Saudi Arabia. Isn't alcohol, like, banned there? Like, totally banned? I'm not, I'm, I think I read that before. Logan Sires, when I was 15, I stayed at my aunt's house for a week, and I found brownies in her freezer, individually wrapped, not thinking anything of it, and I ate 10 and I found out they were edibles. <laughs> I bet you did. <laughs> I bet you were hired to cut. Like Tally off of South Park. You want to get high? You ate 10 different full edibles. Yeah, I bet you were stoned out your ass. RZRTJ, hookah good fuck the talking about. Oh, fuck he talking about. Oh, what the fuck is he talking about? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a hookah person. Hookah, or how do you say it? Uh, Shaston Loft, Wicker Rose. Psychotic medicine does make you suicide depending on the medication imaging. Imaging? Swallowing five trazodons. Imagine swallowing five. I don't know what trazodons are. That's how, that's how hip I am. Logan Sayers, I was high the next morning, I bet, probably that evening too. Yo, but you won't get an overdose. You cannot overdose from marijuana. That's one other beauty. Unlike alcohol, like I don't know how many tens of thousands of people die every single year from alcohol overdose, alcohol poisoning. Uh, Mr. Sultan, I am from so, – I want to read that. I'm from Saudi Arabia in – I study general and translation English, and yes, alcohol is illegal in Saudi Arabia. I thought so. Sleeping horse pill, Caleb. Oh, that Trazodan or whatever. Uh, I don't know. I, I just have to take your word for it. Linda Millet, Millet I am praying for you. Love you and your whole family. My brother went through what you're going through, but he died in 2018 in Houston, Texas. Saw his two grown sons before he died. Dang, Linda, I'm so sorry to hear that. That's terrible. 
Uh, Shasta Loth, Gab, 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 Penton, Trozodone, Narcos, Oxycodone, Hulk, Xanax. God dang, I got a bunch of, bunch of pill heads here. Gee, many Christmas. Y'all are, y'all are schooling the old man here. Yo, my mom made cake before my birthday, so I thought she wouldn't mind if I took a taste, but it was in mom's special cake. Oops. Hold on, I gotta make sure it's not lame. Oh! Kids are right at one hour. I am going to have to wrap this up within the next couple of minutes. Uh, can you say, hi, Michaela? Michaela Frederick, hello. Look, uh, I hate Trezodon. It makes you drop asleep, not safe, if you're not laying down. I wouldn't know. I've never tried it. I hope I never have to. Mr. Sultan, well, in your state, I guess you're talking to somebody else. What time is it in the USA? Oh, uh, here it is 10 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Alex Schmidt, I've smoked marijuana twice in my life, and the one time I got baked, it took to friends to hold me up the stairs. Uh, please don't delete your channel off. Please don't delete your comments. Uh, my whomping mills are probably the ones doing that. I'm only deleting the ones about the kids. Yeah, because it just, it's just, I'm not going to talk about that. HBO hilarious. It was a weed cake. Nice. You know, the shitty thing about Texas is that you could have like, I don't know if you what grams, like a, a nug or a couple nugs and whatever that weight is, if it's under X amount, it's like a misdemeanor. And sometimes they even just let you go. But if you take that same couple nugs and boil it and get the oil out and then use that oil to make brownies and say your plate of brownies weighs two pounds. There have been cases where they weigh the whole pot brownie, the whole plate of brownies, and it could be several pounds, which instantly becomes a felony. It's that stupid. Texas, San Antonio in the building, Shasta Law. I'm so good. No offense. I'm just so I had a really, really, really shit, shit time in Santo. That's where Blaine got arrested. On camera, no less. Oh, Jack209 is your real name, John. I've seen it in your videos a few times where cops uh, read your ID and said John Leverett. Yes, John Caleb Leverett is my real, real name. Uh, John Caleb Leverett's also my Cash App ID. Hark, hark. It's 7 a.m. here. I'm a morning person. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, just had a similar experience the first time. It says Wicca. Uh, just laid on the floor for hours unable to stand up yeah but did you die no <laughs> bro i was so stoned <laughs> y'all are funny <laughs> man i cannot read that font austin texas here i don't i can't read that font shannon wright that's so ridiculous caleb they would do that charge you for two pounds of brown yeah it's dumb where if they hadn't have cooked it, it had just been a misdemeanor or they'd have let you go. But put it in brownies. Oh, we got to add the egg, the weight of the eggs, the weight of the milk, the weight of the sugar, the weight of the flour. It's bullshit. All right, kids. I got to go. If for no other reason to quote the the great the great actor, uh, Forrest Gump, I got to pee. So anyway, I've really enjoyed it. Uh, talk to your friends about the deadbeat attorney general. And if you are a parent or a parent to be, or if your kids have kids, if you're about to be a grandparent, please consider not hitting your children. Uh, children are small and they're really easily, I hate to say the word manipulate, but they're really easy, especially the smaller they are, they're really easy to teach, to control. You can get them to do what you want to do, behave the way that you think is morally correct without fucking hitting your kids. So consider not hitting your kids and I love y'all and y'all probably won't see me again until I'm not here and I'm on my boat. Y'all take care. Enjoy it. Thanks so much.